The dynamic shield grill is of course common to the Mitsubishi range and you can notice a Mitsubishi very quickly when you see that grill in your rear view mirror. You come across over here, big daytime running lights over here, LED headlights. These are all good features. You can see the chrome surround over there just highlighting the features and the bold face of the car. Of course, being an SUV, you've got the cladding. Note the black cladding that comes under the bumper, round the big wheel arches over here, and runs the length of the car as well. And of course, they frame these really nice 18 inch mag wheels that you've got over here. You take a look along the side over here now and you'll notice this is a medium SUV I'd like to categorize it. it falls very much into the medium SUV size and category in my book. You have a look over here you open the passenger door and I'm looking from the passenger side in particular because note leather trim throughout and something that is a good feature over here. Electric seat adjustment for both driver and passenger. Now not everybody gives you electric adjustment for the passenger as well. It's a nice feature. You've got really nice white contrast stitching on the seats as well that goes with the leather trim. We come back over here. Nice big back door. You open it up and I'm going to climb into the back quickly while we're doing this and you'll have a look at the space in the back seat and that's what I want to show you quickly. Plenty of room. Have a look. Passenger seat is actually set even further back than the driver's seat, which were when I set it for myself. But you can see lots and lots of space in the back over here. Good clearance for headroom, even with my hat on. So that's a good feature as far as I'm concerned. And you do have a 12 volt socket for rear seat passengers at the back over there. May not be a USB, but of course you can get a converter, little converter connection. So that's a good feature and a nice thing to have as well. But the point I'm making is lots of space in the back seat for a nice family sized SUV. And that's what's really so important in today's world. There are ISOFIX fittings as well in the back for the family and for family use. So keep that in mind too. We come around to the back over here. Let's just have a look again. You've got the boomerang, can I call them shape, LED tail lights over here, nice and high framing. Of course, the rear window over there. You've got the spoiler over the top. These are features you're expecting these days, of course. Rear park distance control. There is a rear camera. And you've got the cladding effect over here. It's quite an unusual effect with the black and the silver sort of next to each other but of course it makes it look like it's a skid plate kind of effect and gives you the tougher effect of a SUV. Pop open the boot over here and there are a couple of things I think I need to just show you. You've got of course the nice easy to flip up and down cover over there and then I'm pretty sure it's to allow for and accommodate a full sized spare wheel over here which is of course a great feature. And you really do want the full size one as opposed to so many that don't give you a full size and it's still an 18 incher thank you for that but it is an unusual feature do you see how they've stepped up slightly on the floor in order to create the space for that spare wheel got big areas on the sides over here that i actually found quite useful for storing things so that's quite nice mitsubishi quote a figure of 407 liters 437 liters for the boot space which is pretty generous and of course you can tumble the rear seats two-thirds one-third to get at just over a thousand liters of utility space in the vehicle if you need to carry a bigger load so again that is very much in the ballpark for a medium SUV when they launched the Eclipse Cross in South Africa about two and a half years ago they launched it with a two-liter naturally aspirated engine and I was on the launch, I drove it, and possibly it was a little bit underwhelming power-wise. Well, they added along the way and with this facelift. Now, this is the 1.5 litre turbo version. Four-cylinder petrol, 110 kilowatts, 
250 newton meters of torque, powering the front wheels through a CVT automatic gearbox, and it certainly now has more than sufficient oomph as far as I'm concerned for this category. Let's take a quick drive and let's look inside. On the road it's a case of it's really smooth, it's comfortable, it's relaxed. And the word relaxed actually really sticks in my mind right now. Because this is a car for relaxed driving. It's pleasant, it's a good place to be. I could just picture actually taking a trip down to Durban or something like that in this car and just hitting the open road and cruising at the speed limit. Whether you use the cruise control or not doesn't matter. And I think it would be a very comfortable, pleasant trip. And you could certainly put two or three passengers in the back while you're doing it. It's just one of those cars that there's no rushing, there's no chasing, there's no nothing. But it certainly does everything. As this old saying goes, it does what it says on the tin. And I think that's the way I'd like to sum this one up. It really does. The price is competitive. The space is competitive. And to me, it feels very good together. And all those are features that I think are very, very important. You can see I'm just driving very slowly through suburbia because it just feels like that's the way you should drive this car. Light, easy, comfortable, spacious, and relaxed. Jumping inside, you'll see the instrumentation is very simple, very straightforward, but it certainly gives you the information you want. But there are one or two unusual things I want to show you quickly before we do anything else. And I've just got to try and get the camera in to show you what I'm trying to. And it's a little bit awkward to get there. But you'll see, I'm coming over here, it's hidden by the steering wheel. But behind the steering wheel, there are three buttons for scrolling through the trip computer. You can't really see them, I apologize. There you go, you can see them now. And that's where you scroll through the trip computer. It took me a few moments to work that one out. But then another feature this car has got, and this is a very nice feature, and I just hope I can show it to you properly because they're very difficult to show sometimes. There we go, the heads-up display, which is standard on this car. Now, it's one of those that pops up when you start the ignition and, of course, goes back down. But a feature it has that certainly worked for me because depending on your size, your stature, shall we term it, heads-up displays can be awkward, i found sometimes, to get them right for your position and your seat height etc well over there and i hope I, you can switch it off and that button over there can adjust the height of the display on the heads up as simple as that it simply moves it up or down and i think that is a really neat feature especially as i said for somebody who's slightly vertically challenged like i am fuel consumption i've been looking and looking we've done 632 kilometers on this test already and there doesn't seem to be a readout that gives you your, your exact consumption. But I can tell you now, we've been averaging between 9 and 10 litres per 100. All urban driving, some freeway. I haven't even done a famous Motor Matters road trip in this car. Just life as it is at the moment. Let's leave it there. We come across, of course, now to the nice big 8-inch touchscreen in the centre. The infotainment screen. It's a nice big screen. It's very clear. It's very simple. It gives you what you want. There's your info, for example, and can give you fuel consumption. But of course, that gives you this just what you're averaging now. And you can see I've still got 160 kilometers left in the tank. But I think you get the idea. Go back home. That gives you all different settings. And of course, it is Android Auto and Apple CarPlay compatible, which are so very important today. You've got all of those. They're nice and easy. You've got, I didn't mention to you, cruise control as well. So that is a good feature to have. Let's just jump down over here. I mentioned CVT automatic gearbox. Well, Mitsubishi certainly have got their CVTs right as far as I'm concerned. They work really, really well. And coming back to the steering wheel now, you'll see you've got pretty substantial paddles on the steering wheel. Now, I always have to say, paddles on a family medium SUV with a CVT gearbox, I still struggle to actually see the reason or the purpose of them. That's me. I don't know. I'm sure some people would use them. I don't quite understand why you have to have them on this car. But they're there. 
The gearbox itself, as I said, is a great example of a CVT. Smooth, comfortable. I didn't race this car. I didn't push it because that's not what you're dealing with in this car. But it certainly has worked very well. You've got dual zone automatic air conditioning over here or climate control. Effective, works nicely, I don't have to say much more. And just below it, you've got two USBs over there for the front. But now something that I did find awkward, you can see just my phone cover. I'll show you using the cover. There is a nice space over here, but now note this, my phone doesn't actually fit that way into this. I ended up using my phone, leaving it like that, which of course meant it moved around a little bit. Stupid little point, I know, but it's something that I noticed. Anyway, you do have heating for front driver and passenger seats as well. Seat heating, and of course you've got the electronic parking brake and auto hold over there next to it. All neat and comfortable and easy. You've got the, of course, glossy black, what they call the piano black, around the console over here with a lot of silver trim as well. The dashboard is very neat, it flows, it's smooth, it's, it looks softer touch than it actually is, but it's comfortable, it's nice, and this car's got 5,000 kilometers on the clock, I haven't noticed a single rattle or anything like that, so it really feels like it's well put together, and that's what counts. You've got a little bit of a carbon fiber type effect on the door handles and the door panels, etc. But that's all, I think, to be expected in this category of the market. You've got a nice armrest and a center console over here for the driver and passenger. These are all features you expect on this vehicle. I've mentioned the power, I've mentioned all of those factors to you, but now I've got to say to you, there's a little bit of a confusion in my mind regarding this car, where exactly it fits. And why I say that is quite simply because of this. It's a in my book, a medium SUV, but it's priced closer to crossover SUVs. And let me tell you the price right now is 500,000 Rand, 499,900, which is very competitive for the size of the vehicle, but you are lacking a few things. You've got, of course, ABS braking, you've got six airbags, you've got Isofix, you've got all those kind of features, which are great and they're excellent, I agree. But you don't have blind spot warning, you don't have rear cross traffic warning, you don't have lane keep or lane departure or any of those things that many of the top models of this size do have. But then they are 100,000 Rand more expensive. So that's what makes this an interesting, interesting vehicle in my book. Because it's bigger, but it hasn't got that top, top level of safety spec that competitors of this size can offer. But the price. So, always the choice is yours. It's smooth, it's comfortable, it drives really nicely. I have to say that, and I've enjoyed driving it. But if you want all those extra features, well, have you got the extra 100,000 Rand? That's the question. The price does include a five year, 90,000 kilometer service plan as well. Keep that in mind. So the choice as always is the buyers. The question becomes, do you want the extra space or do you want the extra spec? That's up to you, isn't it? I will leave the choice to you. For Motor Matters, I'm Eleanor. I'll see you next time.